Pixel Vixens. Homemade cosplay porn. For fans, by fans. Hi everyone, Noelle Cypress here, and I am here to show you my before and after Hinata transformation. Now, quick warning, I am not the best at makeup, however, I'm going to do my best for you guys, so I hope you enjoy. So for starters, I start with my Maybelline cover-up. It looks like lipstick, but it's actually a cover-up for your face. And what I do is I make some triangles under my eyes in order to just cover up that, that like sleepy eye look. And then I start covering up my T area, which is an area that helps just pretty much bring out the femininity in my face. It's a very good area to cover up when you're a woman and trying to look uh, girly. After I cover everything up, I use a brush, like so, a big old kabuki brush, and I just blend it all into my face. So this is me blending all of it in. And make sure, you know, you get all those spots, because if you're gonna have a random line of, of you know, cover up, it's, it's gonna look really awkward, like how you saw I had a, like a pseudo mustache, so that'll look really weird. Now I have a blemish up on my forehead, which I also use the cover up to cover that up, and then I continue to just blend everything into my face. So now that I've mostly blended it all in, you can see that I pretty much no longer have color to my face. I have completely erased it and I look like a ghoul. So we're going to use Neutrogena Skin Clearing Mineral Powder. This color is going to match my skin way more than the cover-up from before, and that is because it is to fill out the color in my face. Now that I've covered the blemishes and my, my sleepy areas, it just makes me look less, you know, like a ghoul. So what I'm doing is just patting down on the powder and then patting the powder down onto my face. So that's how I do that. See? I look less like a ghoul already. Awesome. So then I decide that I need to put on my wig cap. Usually you put on your wig cap first. I definitely dropped the ball on that one. My bad all. I prefer to use the kind that are the, the meshy kind. And I pretty much make a ponytail out of it, as you can see right here. And I take the ponytail and I just stuff it right on up in there on my head. And I try to uh, disperse it among the head. See, uh, just like, you know, scrub the scalp as if you're shampooing and it kind of makes it so there's not as big of a lump. So let's move on to more of the makeup. I've used the Impulse Company. It is www.impulsecosmetics.com. I highly suggest them because they have makeup samples, which is exactly what I'm using throughout this tutorial. This is their uh, Ever After Mate Lip Liqueur sample. Um, I used it because I wanted to look really innocent, and I feel like a close to skin tone lip color gives off that innocent vibe that Hinata gives off. Um, just, you know, rub it on in and lick your lips a few times to give it that, that natural lip look. And then I move on to use their Sugar Plum eyeshadow, once again a sample size. I use a clean finger and dab it on in and just cover my entire eyelid with it. Now the cute pretty thing about the Sugar Plum is it is a, a duo colored sort of thing. As you can see it turns from green to a light purple when I move my head. So I cover both eyelids with this very light, light color, but there isn't much uh, notice to it, so I also use Ghoul's Night Out eyeshadow, which is a darker purple. I use a clean finger to just dab it right on there on the outside of my eyelid. Then I use another clean finger to shade the two between each other. See what I did there? And I used my pinky finger because it's a lot smaller of a finger, so I can give that just the, the edge of my eyelid the color. And then once again, you know, just smudge the two together to make this uh, ombre sort of look, I guess. And that's great, grand, wonderful. However, there's still something not quite right. My face is too bland. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take my e.l.f. beauty book, which is just a whole bunch of eyeshadows. And even though it's an eyeshadow, I'm gonna use a very light, light, brown. See right here. And I'm going to attempt to give myself a little bit more depth in my cheeks. Now I'm just doing small little lines and trying to ensure that they're even. 
And then I take my kabuki brush from earlier, and I just use my kabuki brush to just run along and make sure that there's no random light brown lines all along my face, because that would just look awkward. So, you know, you just gotta get it all smushed in there. And then we move on to eyeliner. I'm just using a simple black pencil eyeliner for uh, my, my water lid. Uh, I really like adding color to my water lid. Uh, it's just something that I've always enjoyed doing with my makeup. And I think it accentuates my eyes. But then I move on to a uh, more liquid. It's a light, or dark brown, not light brown. It's a dark brown. And I use it to outline my eyeliner wings. Now a good friend gave me the advice that I definitely follow to a T. And that is, is just do the outline of the wings when you're making them. That way you don't have a whole bunch of eyeliner mess to wipe away. It's so much easier to wipe away a outline of a, of a wing. Now make sure that they're, they're relatively even. It's always easier to make one bigger rather than one smaller. But you know, once again, that, that just gets you smudgy. Once you have the outlines, you can move on to a um, liquidy eyeliner. Now I like to take this out, this eyeliner and give myself a little bit of a, what I call an anime underline. I believe it makes my eyes look a little more anime. Some people could say it doesn't, but hey, I like it and I use it to fill in my wings. Ta-da! Now we move on to eyelashes. I purchased these from overseas, as you can playfully tell. And they're very pretty eyelashes that have varying heights. And they have these little wings on the side, so let's just cut those off. There we go. And then we use an aloe um, eyelash glue that I got from the drugstore. It's very simple to find. Oh, and make sure that it's going the correct direction, as you saw I just did. Anyway, apply like so. I, I'm brand new at eyelashes as well, so I don't know if you apply liberally or not liberally. That, that's how much I apply to it. And the most painstaking part of makeup ever is applying eyelash to eyelid. I struggled with this for a few minutes. So you get super, super duper high speed. <laughs> you see that there's a little bit of eyelash that is kind of sticking out and looking a little awkward? That's fine. We will take care of this later. For the second eyelash, I blow on the, the glue a little bit to give myself a little more <laughs> uh, ease to attach it to my eyelid. There we go, I got my eyelashes on, but you still got that awkward little line that they're creating. Don't worry, we take our eyeliner, the eyeliner from before, make sure it's the black kind, and you just kind of fill in that area to give yourself like a little, I don't know, line so it's more hidden in the shadows. Uh, make sure to not like smudge up the rest of your makeup while doing this. Feel free to use multiple kinds of eyeliners, I totally did. And then there, you can't really tell that there is a line of eyelash just kind of existing. Now here's a really important part. Wash your hands. Make sure they're super duper clean because we're going to put in eye contacts next. The reason why my eye contacts came in after all the makeup is because these eye contacts are actually very, very hard to see out of. So I had to do them last. If you're doing a cosplay that doesn't hinder your, your sight, I would suggest putting these in first because of how bloodshot that they make your eyes. As you can see, I only hold my bottom eyelid when I put on my eye contacts. It makes it very easy for me. Some suggest that you hold both your upper and lower eyelids, however that just makes my eyelids clamp shut and not listen to me whatsoever. So I just take my lower eyelid, pull it down, and boop, right in. It makes it really easy. So now I just kind of look like this monster. Haha, <laughs> monster. Ooh, ooh, rawr, or something. I don't know. Anyway, time to perfect my Hinata look. Get your wig and make sure that it is nice and brushed. Make sure all the knots out of it. If you don't know proper wig handling, you always start from the bottom up. Because remember children, our wigs are not gonna regrow themselves. The more we pull out, well, that's the less hair that your wig has. Just start from the bottom, be gentle, and work out all those knots. Put on your wig and make sure that it's straight, unlike mine, which is crooked at the moment. Don't worry, I'll fix it. And there we go, more straight. Woo! 
And I wouldn't be Hinata without my hidden Leaf Village headband. So there we go. Up and run around my neck just the way Hinata wears it. And of course, the Hinata coat. And here is the before and after. Clearly the before is on the after side and the after is on the before side, but I'm pretty sure you guys can figure out which one is cosplay me and which one is real me. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Again, I'm not that much of a master at makeup, but I think I pull off this look pretty darn well. I mean, look at me. I'm a cute Kinata, aren't I? I can like do the finger thing and the shy thing and like... I don't know, the, the hand thing. No, not really. But yeah, thanks you guys so much. I really appreciate you guys watching this video, and I hope that you guys continue to watch our YouTube channel. Thanks, and can't wait to show you what we have for next week.